from a boiling river to mysterious lights, all the way to a volcano with blue lava. We are looking at some of the most remarkable places as we cover the top 10 scientifically impossible places that actually exist on Earth. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Boiling River. It is pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing, but for a very different reason. The Boiling River got its name for being exactly that, as it is a river that is near a boiling point at all times. The water temperature reaches up to 93 degrees Celsius, which is just shy of the boiling point, and the steam coming off the surface of the water is an obvious warning to all living creatures that it is absolutely unswimmable. You could, however, poach an egg in this river, although that's probably not the recommended cooking method. But if you wanted to swim in the river, you might become the poached egg. There is still debate around the source of the heat for this river, but as of right now, it is believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Since the river is not near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, however, it is quite an anomaly. There are, of course, more local legends that state that the river is a place of power and that the mother of waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange river. Either way, just don't swim in it and everything will be fine. In our number nine spot today, we have Mount Roraima. This mountain is located on the border of Venezuela, Brazil, and Guyana, and it is the highest mountain in its chain. This mountain features an unusual tabletop summit and is extremely hard to explore due to its steep slopes and just generally rough terrain. Aside from the physical aspect, however, it is extremely difficult to get permission to climb this mountain because of its triple border. There is an ancient belief that goes hand in hand with this mountain that says that this mountain was once the home to a tree that produced all of the fruits and vegetables in the world. This spiritual belief has of course only increased the difficulty in getting permission to summit the mountain. While it has been climbed before, and a few lucky people have followed the exact same trail as the initial climb, much of the rest of the mountain has never been explored and therefore remains uncharted territory. It is said that this mountain has over 5,000 different plant species that grow only there and nowhere else. And it is said that it looks roughly the same as it did millions and millions of years ago. This place truly is magical, and it looks like a land that floats above the clouds. In our number eight spot today, we have Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania, just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea, and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years, and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere. And of the 48 species found in the cave so far, 33 of them were endemic, meaning that they can't be found anywhere else on earth. It is just crazy that it is possible for five and a half million years, the creatures on this planet could be living an entirely different life than the rest of us inside a previously undiscovered place. It truly is fascinating. In our number seven spot today, we have lightning. Basically, in western Venezuela, right over the Catatumbo River, there are these intense, insane lightning storms, and it's a complete atmospheric phenomenon. This lightning occurs 140 to 160 nights a year, nine hours per day, and from 16 to 40 times per minute. That is insane. That's so much lightning. Another thing that's so fascinating about this lightning is that it is colorful and doesn't produce any thunder. The lightning does change its frequency up from time to time, and at one point it stopped for a few weeks, and people thought that maybe it was going to have been exhausted forever, but that changed when the lightning came back, putting it right back on our list of mysteries that we just can't quite figure out. Many people have studied the lightning, trying to figure out how exactly it has been created and what makes this phenomena what it is, but we just aren't really quite sure yet. In our number six spot today, we have Point Nemo. You know when you take a road trip and you have to stop somewhere to pee and it's always just like a random town and you're like, wow, we're really out here in the middle of nowhere right now. Well, those random towns have nothing on Point Nemo. This is the most remote location on earth. It's actually known as the oceanic pole of inaccessibility because it is the furthest point away from land. This area is surrounded by more than 1000 miles of ocean in every direction. There's obviously no humans who live even close to Point Nemo, which is why it is called that in the first place, Nemo being Latin for no one. While this may not be a scientifically impossible place, it's just this one fact that is honestly so shocking to me, and it's what got this place 
place a spot on this list. This location is so isolated that the closest people to Nemo aren't even on this Earth. Since the inhabited area closest to the point is over 1,000 miles away, the humans aboard the International Space Station are way closer than anyone is on land. Truly just wild. Kind of sounds like a dream, kind of sounds like a nightmare. I don't know. In our number five spot today, we have Kawa Ijen. Located in Indonesia, this is one of the most remarkable and interesting places on Earth. Firstly, this active volcano emits hot, flammable sulfurous gases. These gases ignite as they enter the oxygen rich atmosphere of Earth, and this causes them to burn with a stunning blue flame. Further scientific processes also allows there to be a flow of molten sulfur that also has the same striking blue flame. At night is really when you get quite a show from this coloring as it quite literally looks like a flow of blue lava. The other incredible thing about this location is that there is a one kilometer wide caldera that is filled with turquoise blue water. The watercolor, while it looks gorgeous, is a result of the extreme acidity as well as a high concentration of dissolved metals. It truly is an astonishing place to look at and really is quite magnificent. In our number four spot today, we have the double tree. This double tree is located in Italy and when you look at it, at first it simply just doesn't quite seem possible. Possible. Referred to as the double tree of Kesorzo, this is a healthy cherry tree that is growing out of a mulberry tree. This isn't the first ever case of a parasitic tree, but what sets this one apart is its health and longevity. Previous examples of parasitic trees have been small, stunted trees that don't live for very long, but in this case, these trees are fully formed and healthy and no one is really quite sure how this all happened. The roots of the cherry tree were able to push through the mulberry tree's trunk where they could extend into the soil below, and thus the healthiest double tree ever was born. In our number three spot today, we have Cape Melville. Cape Melville is located in Australia and is the home to one of the lost worlds of the earth. It truthfully wasn't discovered until recently, and that is due to the surrounding wall of granite boulders that are hundreds of feet tall. But inside this stone wall is an amazing, mysterious, an uncharted rainforest, which is just the coolest thing. Because of the more recent discovery and the lack of exploration, this area has been preserved in its natural state, which is something not easily found on our very overpopulated planet. This place is only accessible by helicopter and has only seen one major scientific exploration, but on this one adventure, at least three new species were found. I'm sure there will be further research of the area to learn about all of the endemic species that live there and to study how they evolved to fit in this interesting ecosystem. The earth really is just so cool. In our number two spot today, we have the Devil's Kettle. This area is said to hold one of Minnesota's greatest mysteries. As the Brule River flows through in order to make its way toward Lake Superior, there's a point where it makes an 800 foot drop in eight miles. Because of this journey through time, waterfalls have been created as the water erodes the rocky terrain. One waterfall in particular is the one we want to talk about today. The stream splits into two as it falls over the edge. One of the two streams flows exactly how you would think it does, while the other is a little more mysterious. On this side, the water rushes into a cavern that seems to go nowhere. The cavern never fills up somehow, but no one can figure out where the water is going. It's a strange phenomenon that has resulted in the fall gaining the nickname, the Devil's Kettle. It is said that people have tried to place things in the water that might help show them where the water is flowing to, but despite these efforts, the items were just never seen again. In our number one spot today, we have Hesdalen Valley. This is an area that is located in rural central Norway, and while I'm sure it's a wonderful place, we are specifically talking today about what is called the Hesdalen Lights. These lights are of unknown origin. They appear in both the day and the night, and they sort of float through the valley. It is said that the time where the lights appeared the most frequently was between the end of 1981 to 1984, with 15 to 20 sightings per week, but that as of 2010, sightings of the lights is now only around 10 to 20 times annually. The lights are usually white, yellow, or red, and sometimes they appear for only a few seconds, while other times they'll stick around for over an hour. The weirdest thing to me is that these lights move. Sometimes they move insanely fast, other times they're slowly swaying back and forth, sometimes they're just hovering there. No one knows where these lights come from, and I'm just gonna say it. Aliens. There are some currently working hypotheses that one day we might be able to explain this phenomena, but for now, we are just left guessing. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.